you will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. This is the Clearpoint Telephone Company Customer Service Office. My name is Ms. Jones. How may I help you? Yes, I'm moving and I'd like to arrange to have a phone line installed. The woman answers the phone. This is the Clearpoint Telephone Company Customer Service Office. So the words telephone company have been written at the top of the form. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. This is the Clearpoint Telephone Company Customer Service Office. My name is Ms. Jones. How may I help you? Yes, I'm moving and I'd like to arrange to have a phone line installed. Of course. Let me get some information from you first. May I have your name, please? It's Kramer. Harold Kramer. And would you spell your last name for me, please? K-R-A-M-E-R. M-E-R. Got it. Okay. Could I have the address where you'd like to have the telephone connected? That would be number 58 Fulton Avenue, apartment 12. Is that a business or a residence? A residence. It's my new home address. Then the type of phone service you want is residential, not business? Yes, yes. It's for my home. All right. Fine. Now, let me get your employment information. Who is your current employer? I work at the Wrightsville Medical Group. Then your occupation is doctor? Uh, no, I work for the doctors. I'm the office manager. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. OK. And could I have your work phone number? It's 637-555-9014. 9014. Great. Just one more thing. I need to know how long you've been at your current job. I've been working there for quite a while now. Let me see. Eight... No, nine. That's right. Nine years. OK, good. You've been there long enough, so I don't need to ask about any other work history. Now, in addition to our basic phone service, we have several special services available. Could you explain them to me? Most customers opt for unlimited long-distance service. It really saves you money if you make a lot of long-distance calls. That sounds like a good idea. Then I'll put you down for long-distance service. Another popular service is voicemail. Voicemail takes all your messages electronically, and all it takes is one simple phone call to retrieve them. Hmm, voicemail. No, I don't think so. I have an answering machine to take my messages. It's old, but it still works fine. We also provide Internet service if you're interested in that. I am. Please put me down for internet as well as phone service. Right. OK, I think we're almost finished. I just need to schedule a time for the technician to go to your apartment and do the installation. Let me see. What about next Tuesday? Would that work for you? Uh, no, not Tuesday. I'll be at a conference all day. Wednesday would work, though. I'm afraid I won't have any technicians in your area on Wednesday. I could send someone on Friday. That would be fine. What time of day works best for you? Morning or afternoon? Morning would be best. All right, then. It's on the schedule. Do you have any questions? No, I don't think so. Thank you for calling Clearpoint. That is the end of Section 1. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a radio interview about an upcoming fair. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 14. Good afternoon and welcome to City Hour, the radio show that brings you all the latest information about events in and around our city. Today we have with us Cynthia Smith, who is heading up this year's City Fair. Cynthia, would you start by giving us some of the basic information about the fair? Where will it take place this year? I'm glad you asked that question because I know most people will be expecting the fair to be at the fairgrounds as usual, but we've had to change the location this year due to some construction work. You know, they're building the new high school in that neighbourhood and they've been using the fairgrounds as a place to store construction materials. So we've moved the fair to City Park, which I think is a wonderful location. Yes, that will be a great place for the fair. I understand that the fair begins on Friday morning with a special opening event. Actually, it won't begin until that evening, but you're right about the special event. Traditionally, we've begun with a parade, but this year our opening event will be a special dance performance. And the most exciting part is that the mayor will be one of the dancers. The mayor is a woman of many talents. Cynthia, could you tell our listeners about the price of admission? What will it cost to attend the fair? We're trying to keep the price down as much as possible. A three-day pass is just $25, or you can buy a Saturday or Sunday only pass for $15. The opening event on Friday, the dance performance, doesn't cost anything to attend, and we're hoping a lot of people will come to watch that. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Could you tell us about some of the events planned for Saturday and Sunday, the main days of the fair? We have a lot of exciting things planned. There are a number of events, especially for children, including a clown show on Saturday afternoon. On Saturday evening, we've got an event that can be enjoyed by the whole family, a concert by the lake. I'm sure that will be a popular event. Is there anything special planned for Sunday? Yes, a really fun event, and we hope a lot of people will participate. There'll be a singing contest in the afternoon. It's open to everyone at no charge. It doesn't matter whether you're an experienced singer or not. If you've always dreamed of singing on stage, this is your chance. That sounds like a lot of fun. I think it will be. I'd also like your listeners to know that besides the special events I've mentioned, there will be things taking place all weekend. For example, at the food court, international food will be served. You'll be able to sample dishes from all around the world. There will also be special games for children at different locations around the fair. 
Will there be things people can buy, souvenirs, anything like that? We have a large area set aside where there'll be crafts for sale. This will be an opportunity to buy many lovely handmade things and to get to know some of our local artists and craftspeople as well. It sounds like there will be a lot of fun for everyone at this year's fair. Thank you for sharing the information with us, Cynthia. Thank you for inviting me. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between a prospective student and a university advisor about applying to enter the university. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. As you listen to the first part of the conversation, answer questions 21 to 23. I'm interested in entering your business administration program, and I'd like some information on how to apply. I'm a little concerned because I've been out of school for a number of years. That could actually work to your advantage. It's possible to get academic credit for work experience if that experience is related to courses in our program. I've been working in business for several years. How would I get academic credit for that? First, you'll need to read the university catalogue to see if any of the course descriptions match your specific job experience. For example, if you've worked in accounting, you may be able to get credit for an accounting course. So, then what would I do? You would write a summary of your work experience, relating it to specific courses we offer. Submit that to the admissions office with a letter from your work supervisor confirming your experience. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. Would I submit those things at the same time that I apply for admission? That would be the best idea. Have you looked at our course catalogue yet? Uh, no, not yet. I guess I should do that soon. Just go to the university website and you'll find it there. Okay. Can you tell me how the admissions process works? Well, first you'll need to fill out an admissions form and submit it. That's on the website as well. Of course, you'll need to make sure you meet all the admissions requirements. How can I know what those are? The best way to understand them is to come to a special session we're having for prospective students next Wednesday evening. We'll explain the process then and go over the requirements and answer any questions you may have. That sounds great. I'd like to attend. Good. It's at 7 o'clock. Just go to the meeting room in the basement of the library. You know where that is, right? Next to the Student Services Center? Yes, that's it. It'll be a really informative session because it'll also give you a chance to meet several of the professors and get more information about them. By the way, did you come by car today? Uh, no, bus. But I'll probably drive on Wednesday. You'll need to get a parking pass then. 
How do I do that? Can I download one from the website? No, you have to get it in person from the Student Services Center. Just tell them you're here for the meeting at the library. Now, do you think you'd be interested in applying for a part-time job through the university work-study program? I'm considering that. How can I find out what kinds of jobs are offered? You can access the job listings from the computers in the library. Are you planning to study full-time or part-time? I want to be a full-time student. Good. Then you'll qualify for the work-study program. Part-time students aren't eligible. As a full-time student, would I be eligible for a free bus pass? No, unfortunately. We don't have those available for any of our students. However, you can apply for financial assistance to help pay for your books or for your tuition. I'd like to look into that. Do I apply for that at the admissions office? No, that's through us. You'll need to make an appointment with a counsellor. That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a lecture about the black beer. First you have some time to look at questions 31 to 35. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 35. The black bear, or Ursus americanus, has a wide range inhabiting forested areas of North America, including Canada, the United States, and parts of northern Mexico. Black bears are omnivores, getting their nutrition from a wide variety of plants and animals. The particular foods any one bear eats depends on what's available in the area where that bear lives, as well as on the season of the year. Generally speaking, plant foods make up 90% of the bear's diet. The rest of its meals consist of animal foods, such as insects and fish. Bears have a relatively long gestation period. Mating takes place in the spring or early summer, but bear cubs aren't born until the following winter. Usually, two cubs are born at a time, although some litters may have as many as five cubs. Bear cubs are dependent on their mother and may stay with her for close to two years. Wild black bears can live as long as 25 years. They've lived for as long as 30 years or more in captivity. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 36 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 36 to 40. Much of the black bear's range coincides with the range of its close cousin, the grizzly bear. Although these bears are somewhat similar in appearance and habits, it isn't difficult to tell the difference between them. Colour isn't necessarily a distinguishing characteristic, as both species of bears occur in a range of colours from almost blonde to dark brown or black. 
Many black bears, however, have a patch of fur on their chests that's lighter in colour than the rest of their fur. Grizzly bears don't have this patch. Size isn't always a distinguishing feature either, although grizzly bears are usually heavier with an average weight of 225 kilos. Black bears average 140 kilos in weight. Grizzly bears spend time digging in the ground for roots and tubers that make up part of their diet. The large muscles they need for this give them a distinct shoulder hump. This hump is absent in black bears, which don't do the same kind of digging. The shape of the face and ears is also different in each species of bear. Grizzly bears have a depression between the eyes and nose and short round ears. Black bears, on the other hand, have a straighter profile and longer, more pointed ears. Grizzly bears are known for their fearsome, long, sharp claws. Black bears have shorter claws, which are better suited for climbing trees. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will now have 10 minutes.